several schools in Vancouver earned the biggest awards the state of Washington has to offer. Find out who won. And? I was really shocked. <laughs> I was not expecting it. Students at iTech Prep pushed themselves into the world of business, how a popular TV show inspired them. And? A mother is called to her son's school. The surprise waiting for her there that she'll never forget. Hello and welcome to In the Know. I'm Nick Vole. Five schools in our district received the highest award the state of Washington has to hand out, the Washington Achievement Awards. Vancouver School of Arts and Academics was selected for overall excellence, a reflection of high academic achievement by its students. Harney, Hauk, and Lakeshore Elementaries were all named as high progress schools for their academic improvement. Skyview High School also earned that honor. The Achievement Awards are passed out by the Office of the Superintendent. Great job, guys. The district as a whole earned a national honor for its commitment to early childhood education. The magazine American School Board Journal named Vancouver Public Schools as one of 15 Magna Award winners for its Jump Start program. Jump Start, which is available at 14 schools, brings incoming kindergartners into the classroom in the summer before class begins to prepare them for school. The program was supported in part by a $75,000 contribution by the Foundation for Vancouver Public Schools. The American School Board Journal is published by the National School Boards Association. Students at iTech Prep get some inspiration from the TV show Shark Tank and compete for real cash to get their business ideas off the ground. Where hopeful entrepreneurs from across the country dream of a chance to secure an investment and gain powerful partners. On the show Shark Tank, entrepreneurs pitch their ideas for a successful product to a room of potential investors. The iPrize competition at Vancouver iTech Preparatory is just like that. Students design a product and a marketing campaign and pitch it to judges. The project began months ago when teacher Enos Kuna had a moment of inspiration while watching Shark Tank. And I thought, well, we're at a STEM school with a lot of kids that want to be engineers, so what better project than to kind of take that popular media and then give that to them and say, let's do something similar. Students then had to find their own bright idea. It took me a while to think of what I was going to make, but then after I did, I realized that it was actually like not as hard as I thought it was going to be. Engineers from Smith Root Fisheries stopped by teacher Tom Wolverton's classroom to offer advice. Well, somebody did it for me, uh, you know, so it's kind of a payback. I, I did science fair and that sort of thing back when I was in high school and stuff, and so it's just a lot of fun working with the kids. The engineers helped students refine the product designs they'd already been crafting in class. So you're explaining me how I'd go about creating a prototype, how I'm going to go and try and build this myself, and he helped me out with my presentation a lot. He told me all my ideas, how I should present this so people are more interested, people feel like I'm actually solving a problem. Presentation is a big factor to help sell the design. So we were actually looking at ancient Greek rhetoric in my class, ethos, logos, and pathos. How can you have a sense of credibility, also an emotional appeal and um, logical kind of deductive reasoning for why they should invest in your product? Uh, I definitely learned a lot of speaking skills. Uh, I practice my uh, presentation a lot, and so I've definitely found uh, cool ways to just be a better presenter. And so, when the spotlight comes on, the nine finalists are ready to go with PowerPoint presentations, videos, and more to sway the judges. They pitch portable housing, phone cases with built-in wireless earbuds, medical devices, and more. Chloe Morgan designed a plastic mouth bit for horses, which is less cruel than traditional metal ones. I was like really shy about like presenting stuff, but when it came to this, I knew what I was talking about, so it made it easier to explain my product. Daniel Raymond parlayed his hobby, solving Rubik's Cubes, into a first place product. He designed a 6x6 cube that is less likely to break and allows for faster gameplay. He took home a cash prize to develop his design. It was very, very unreal. I, I never even thought I was going to win at all. I, all the other presentations just seemed so good. Chloe, Daniel, and other students hope to develop their products and potentially get them onto the market. It's pretty amazing to think that all these young entrepreneurs are only 14 or 15 years old. I always have high expectations for them, but um, they always just uh, blow me away every single time. 
Three students from iTech Prep head up to Olympia and get an up-close look at democracy. They served as legislative pages for regional representatives. Astrid Dubois, Sequoia Puyea Barca, and Nathaniel Nutter headed to the House of Representatives in March. They served for state representatives Liz Pike and Jim Moeller. As part of their experience, the students attended committee hearings and watched bills being passed on the House floor. They also spent a week in Page School, learning the ins and outs of how to assist legislators. Mathletes from Vancouver schools dominate the Math is Cool regional competition. Eisenhower, Truman, and Roosevelt elementaries took first, second, and third place. Eisenhower also swept the individual awards. Lou Abolza took first, Ben Richter won second, and Levi Williams finished third. Students competed in tests, math relays, mental math problem solving, and a college bowl competition. A Philida Elementary 5th grader wins a statewide writing competition. Zach Madrid's essay, called What My Mother Means to Me, was selected as the state's best in a contest sponsored by the nonprofit American Mothers Organization. His mother, Vanessa, was in the room when he learned he had won. I was really surprised, had no idea. Didn't even know he wrote the essay. Makes me very proud. I was in tears. Zach won a small prize and got to compete in the national competition, but the best part was writing about his mom. It's not every day that you get to like show how much you care. 86 Philida students entered the contest. Only Zach's went to the state level, but Brady Decker and Lucy Ionello finished second and third at Philida. Great job to them all. Speaking of awards, we'd like to pat ourselves on the back just a bit. The VPS TV studio has again been nominated for regional Emmys. The district is nominated for Best Health Science Program and Best Health Science Segment from its show Science. The competition includes public broadcasting stations from several states, as well as network affiliates. The Emmy Awards ceremony is set for June 7th. Vancouver Public Schools won its first ever Emmy last year and has been nominated for five Emmys in the last three years. Students from Columbia River High School head up to Seattle to see who can give the best argument. Members of the International Baccalaureate Program headed north for the Ethics Bowl. Teams were given a topic, developed a position on the issue, and then had to defend their views to a panel of judges. They competed against students from all across Washington and relished the opportunity to flex their brains. It's hard to get that kind of experience anywhere else and ultimately being able to communicate in that kind of way, though that allows people to develop connections that they wouldn't necessarily otherwise be able to develop, which is a huge asset. Although the teams from River won several matches, they didn't take home any trophies, but they hope to next year. This is the first year for the Ethics Bowl team, which sprang in part from River's Theory of Knowledge class, in which students discuss major social issues. Skyview High School prepares for its spring musical, and it's a blast from the 80s. We checked in with the cast of Little Shop of Horrors in the early stages of rehearsal. You might remember the film version of this show, starring Rick Moranis, Steve Martin, and others. The actors we spoke to at Skyview say it's just as much fun as you remember. It's a really good show. It's really fun. Anyone can do it. If you, all you need is, if you're an, interested in puppet, theater, songs, uh, dancing, anything that you're interested in, it's got in this show. Uh, it's really fun. It's really exciting. The entire family can see it. It's family friendly, except for maybe one or two parts. But, I mean, it's high school, so everybody loves it. And as you may remember, this dark comedy is about Audrey II, a killer plant who grows up in a small flower shop. The curtain opens on May 8th, and it runs through the 17th. All shows start at 7 p.m. It's just five bucks, or four dollars, with your student body card. Third graders at Philida Elementary put on a show of their own to share what they've learned about Native Americans. Students presented dances to their classmates, teachers, and parents in an annual assembly. Each third grade classroom did a unique dance set to Native American themed music. Some of the costumes were made by students and others have been passed down year to year. All of the students have been studying Native American culture in their social studies unit. In addition to the performance, students built miniature longhouses which were displayed in the school library. And that's just about it for us. Remember that you can watch past episodes of In the Know on our district YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash vansdtv. Until next time, I'm Nick Cole.